Hey everyone, welcome back to another deck profile. I'm Richard and today we finally got Bluish Flames back, so we got some decent Liberator support this time, unlike the Aggravain junk. And yeah, I'm actually really excited. I've been holding on to these sleeves for the longest time, hoping to get Bluish Flames back, and we finally did. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Um, starter has to basically be Spring Breeze Messenger because there's no better artwork. <laughs> Um, uh, it fits the blue theme, but they all the starters pretty much do the same thing. Just draw and get a quick shield if your opponent's a grade one. So it, it's blue. Got to Got to go with the theme. All right. Next up, I'm gonna go into the grade threes. Starting off with the new one, we got four copies of Bluish Flame Prominence Core. Whoa! I'm going everywhere right now. All right. So Prominence Core. Uh, is directly related to Percival, which is really cool. Uh, the first skill, act once return, you kind of blast, retire something. You'll get top four and you call two things. Then if you have Percival in the soul, you can call all four instead. Uh, and then you can put the remaining under the bottom of your deck in any order you want, so you don't shuffle. So kind of like how the old Blue Flames were like that too. You didn't shuffle after you did the search. And then... Um, the following skill is whenever a unit is placed, this unit and the other unit that you called get 3k. And if the unit you called is Aglavale, uh, Core's uh, original crit becomes 2. So you can't stack it, unlike the original one, where every time you called Core or Aglavale um, from the deck, you would just get another crit and another crit. But this is still fine. I think I like the idea of the fact that you can still be able to do it. Um, just from calling it from hand, which is nice since Agavo goes back to your hand anyways. So, really cool card, fills the board really easily, really, really easily, and it's just nice, you know? Sack one, you get four, if you have Percival in the soul. Speaking of which, let's go on to the boy himself. Got Bluish Flame, Liberator, Percival. Uh, broken card, love it. Please never ban this, but she... <laughs> Uh, first skill is continuous when it's on the Vanguard Circle. Everything on an additional marker, so an Excel gets 5k. The second skill is when it's placed on Van Rear, auto. Uh, if your current Vanguard is grade 3, you can boss 1, you discard a card. You get another Excel marker, and then you search your deck for Aglavale and call it. Or you can search your drop zone as well, so even if you don't have any left in your deck, you still get a call. Um, the fact that you're getting another Excel marker, so if you're playing Excel 2, which most times you are, you get a draw off of that anyway, so the thing you discarded, you just get something back. So for the most part, pretty free card, and also the fact that um, it works on uh, rear guard, so you can just ride core right away, um, call it to rear, call out Aglavale, and then use Aglavale skill to put Percival into the soul, so then that way you already have Percival in the soul for prominence core skill. So there's a lot of consistency going on, and you definitely want to be running for Percival with the deck. Um, Aglavale and Korg came in the same set, um, but Percival you still have to kind of find if you don't want to shell out the extra dollars. But this card is really needed for the deck, so if you do want to build a core deck, I highly recommend try investing in the Percivals as well. It's definitely worth it. And lastly, we got to keep the theme of the, the, the Azure Flames. So we got Prominence Glare of the Azure Flames, not a Liberator, for whatever reason. Um, so this is mostly for aesthetic. I know other decks are running stuff like Sagamore, just to, for the call consistency, but I gotta, I gotta keep my boy Glare in the deck. Um, first skill is when it's ridden or placed on Van. You um, look at the top four cards of your deck, call one, the rest go to bottom. Uh, pretty free, so it's just a free call. The other skill, it pretty much has Raven Hair's skill, which is um, when he attacks, you get 15k in a crit, um, and then the Sentinel, but this one kind of words it differently. So for this skill, you when it attacks, you kind of lost one, you discard a card, and you get effects based on the number of things you called this turn. So if you called three or more, it gets 15k in a crit. If you called four or more, uh, your opponent can't use Sentinels when they call from hand. So same thing as Raven Hair, except uh, it's not Ezel specific. You don't need Blonde Ezel in the Soul, so that's nice. And also, this is just kind of more of like a kill card. Um, also, if you just don't have Core for whatever reason, 
this is also a decent ride target, but for the most part, you want to be on core just because it gets all the, everything's going to get power. You're building a board. This doesn't really build a board, but it's more just kind of like punish and just kind of go after your opponent's PGs and protect markers. That's pretty much it. So that's it for grade threes. Now we're going on to grade twos. Four copies of Oath, Liberator, Aglavale. So Aglavale just recently got reprinted, which is really nice. So that kind of makes it a lot easier for decks like Ezel and Gurgit to be running this card because of how good it is. Um, Percival wasn't reprinted for whatever reason. Bushy, please reprint Percival too if you're going to reprint this. Uh, two skills. When it's placed on Van, you count plus one, look at top three, and you call one from among the three, and then the rest go to bottom. Uh, the second skill is Rearguard Circle. Uh, at the end of the battle, when it attacks, you pick a rearguard, shove it in your soul, it gets 10k, and at the end of the battle, this bounces back into your hand. Making it really easy, proc it off with core, so when you call it the next turn, core gets a crit, this gets another 3k. It's all it's all just coming together, you know? So, for Aglaville, obviously it's the search target for Percival as well, so more reason to run for. Next up, just to keep the Liberator aesthetic, I'm running four copies of another card that came in the same set as Core, which is Liberator of Royalty Fallon. A uh, nice retrain from the Liberator Trial decks, which is nice. So Fallon's first skill is Rearguard during your turn. If something was called from your deck, it's 5k. So it's still got that beat stick kind of vibe going. Uh, the second skill is Van Your Rear. Uh, when this attacks and hits a Vanguard, you can look at the top card. And if it's a unit, you may call it. So keyword is may, meaning that even if it is a unit, you don't have to call it. You can just put it right back on the top of your deck. So you know, keeping the triggers on the top if you want. So basically when it hits, you can check top. If it's a trigger, leave it there. If it's not a trigger, call it. Helps trigger thin. Decent card. It's also a decent ride target. So that way you can kind of start building a board really early. And um, basically if you call it from hand or call it from deck with prominence core, it's gonna get plus eight because of core skill and also its own skill. So. That's pretty decent. It's a 17k beat stick on its own without being on a marker. You put it on a marker, now it's 22. It's, it's a really decent beater, so I like to run four of it. It also has a lot of on, on hit pressure, too, so there's that. Next up, I'm running three copies of Vivian. We haven't seen Vivian in a profile in a while, and I'm actually kind of excited to bring this card back. So, Vivian's skill is Vander Rear. When it's placed from hand, you cannot blast and soul blast. You look at the top three, and you call one uh, to rear, and then put the rest on the bottom of your deck. And this unit gets 3k. So it's kind of like OG Aglavale, except it has to be from, from hand. Uh, the reason I'm running this is obviously it's a good, another good ride target, so all the grade twos for the most part are good to ride. Um, it also helps you search out the deck for cards that have to be called from the deck, like Josephus, um, and out procs off resources from stuff like Berengaria, Dindrain. It's just also, when you're on core, this gets another three, the thing you called gets another three, just to help you build more board, so that that way, like, if the only card that you have to build a board is prominence core, you still have more options with Vivian. I'm only running three just for space reasons, and also Vivian doesn't work when it's called from the deck, so it just kind of gets called and it's vanilla, but it's not the end of the world. So three Vivian's pretty nice. And lastly, for grade twos, we got one copy of Berengaria. This is what that fourth Vivian space would have been, but I like Berengaria. So Berengaria's skill is when it's placed on rear by a card effect, you can do one of two things. You can either counter blast to soul charge or soul blast to counter charge. You're most likely gonna do the second thing. I don't think this deck builds enough souls it is, so it's fine. Just soul blast, counter charge. It's basically a Dindrain version of the Grade 2. Did I say that right? <laughs> but yeah, it's shiny too. It came in the same set, reprints for Prominence Core and Aglaville and all the other ones, so that's nice. Got a little foiled Berengaria there. So that's it for Grade 2s. Now we're on to Grade 1s. Another retrain. Fast Chase Liberator, Josephus. Josephus is actually really decent, especially in this deck, because you're going to be calling from the deck a lot. So Cephas' first skill is if another unit rides on top of this, you can look at the top card and call it. So kind of like Fallon, except this is when it's written on top of. So if it's a trigger, you can leave it there. 
Um, and if it's not, you just call it and you build a board. So good ride target. Second skill is when it's placed um, on a rearguard circle from the deck, you can do both things. But the first thing is uh, soul blast to counter charge. And the second thing is soul blast to draw. So you could do one or the other or both. That's the nice thing about the little little cost icon is that it is optional. So if you have two soul, you can counter charge and draw. Uh, but if you only have the enough cost for one, whatever feels like is needed in the moment you can do. So overall, I like the versatility that Josefa's got going on for it. So definite four of for there. Next up, um, another reprint came in the same little nice foiling. Um, so I wanted to use it, just kind of fit the theme. Uh, Dawning Knight Gorbaduck. Um, it's the great three searcher that every clan basically has for V-Series. It's when it's placed from hand, van or rear, look at top five, search a grade three. If you get a grade three, then you discard a card. Second skill gives it 5k. They all do the same thing. For this one's requirements, it's just you have to call two things, which is the easiest thing in the world for this deck. So um, just running this just because Percival is a card that exists, and we want to search out Percival's just so that we can have it to get Core's uh, ability to call more things off faster. And also Percival helps you get Aglavale, and Aglavale gives Core a crit. So a lot of synergy between them. And then also, it's also a good right target. You write it, look at top five, you had a grade three. If you're missing core, search core and you get it. Um, and then after that, you don't really have to keep rewriting. So if you just want to call this from hand, just to filter out a grade three out of your deck, just put it straight into the drop zone. That's an option too. Um, and it gets 5K. So it's 13K beat stick. So if you call it, just whenever you call it, uh, it becomes 16K on its own. So it's got a pretty decent amount of power backed on it, so overall good card. And lastly, as if Josephus wasn't enough for resources, we got four copies of Listener of Truth Dindrain. Dindrain skills when a place by card ability, you soul blast, and you can do one of two things. You could either draw a card or you can counter charge, and if you counter charge, you get the red text of getting 3k. So if you want more counter charge so that you can do more cores and Vivians and Percivals, you can do that, and it gets another 3. Obviously, it gets an additional 3 from core, so that makes a nice 13k booster. But it could also be there for draws. Draws are also really nice, so this deck can potentially have a lot of hand going for it if you call Dindrains and Josephus' back-to-back, -back, so that's really nice. But um, you, there were uh, original ideas when people were kind of playtesting with core where you would run the Vortimers just because they get effects when they're retired by card ability, so you could retire them with prominence core. But the 5k and the counter charging with the grade 2 Vortimer didn't really seem worth it when you have cards like Berengaria and Dindrain, so consistency pretty much matters. So Viv uh, Vivian, Dindrain's pretty good. So that's it for grade ones. We're actually now hitting the triggers. And another new card to join us for V series and premium. We have Heal Guardians. So uh, every clan got a Heal Guardian. You should definitely get your hands on some now because I don't think they're going to be reprinted anytime soon. If they are, that's wonderful. But if not, you want to get these. Um, Heal Guardians have um, two main effects. The first effect is when it's placed on a Guardian Circle. If you have not ridden to grade three yet, you can do one of two things. You could either give your Vanguard 10k for the turn so now your 9 or 10k Vanguard is 19 or 20k for the rest of the turn. Or you can choose the unit that your opponent is attacking with, and you can reduce its crit by 2. So if your opponent's Vanguard has, you know, one crit on it, and you're just like, I really don't want to take two crits, like even if they get a crit trigger, I really don't want to deal with it, you can just guard with the Heal Guardian, reduce your opponent's crit by 2. Now even if they get a crit, it net zeroes out, so you not going to take any damage there. So it's a really good card for preventing your opponent from kind of abusing you early if they ride degree 3 before you. So I think it's really nice. Um, it does have less shield, so it's 5k less than the traditional vanilla grade or vanilla triggers, heal triggers. But it's a grade 3, so it's searchable with Gorbaduck. And it has an additional effect. It's uh, If you don't have any damage, you can call it to rear, and you put the top card of your deck in your damage zone. 
So is it that or is it deal a damage? And it's just put the top. So you don't take a damage check, but you just you have something to pay with counterblast if your opponent damage denies you in premium. So that's really nice, but mostly it's there for the first effect. Um, heal guardians are nice overall, even though it loses the 5k shield. I think having access to preventing yourself from being abused really early on is nice, especially since for the most part, this deck doesn't really go off until it hits grade 3, so having this to kind of protect yourself. Pretty decent. Alright, next up, more triggers with skills. We got our draw PGs. Um, I still think these are better than the Sentinel crits just because of the fact that you have enough hand to pay the cost for the PG, which is fine. Um, I don't really feel like I'm going to be decking out because if you kind of manage your resources well enough, you don't have to keep drawing with Hosephus and Dindrain, so draw PGs are nice, draw triggers are always good, damaging draw triggers are always the best feeling. Um, draw, tra draw PGs are just the way to go with this one. And lastly, this is the part where I feel like people have been debating on is what's, what's the trigger lineup? Is it crits? Is it fronts? For me personally, I went with fronts, so it's an 8 front deck. Uh, I've seen people do four front, four crit, eight crit. All are fine. They, you know, you can go aggro with cores crits and then crit crit. You win. You get crits when you ride glare, or you could do fronts and crits so that your vanguard gets a crit and now your front row also gets a, you know, power. But for the time that I've been playtesting, I noticed that a lot of times the units that even if I call them with core and they get that little three k, they're not doing much. And I feel like the front makes a big difference with what can hit and what's putting pressure on my opponent, especially if you have cards like Fallon, where when they do hit, you get to call another card. Um, so that kind of keeps the chain of attacks going. So for the most part, I think fronts are the way to go, and I'm pretty comfortable with it, especially anything. You're going to make a bunch of Excel circles with Percivals and rewriting cores, etc. So that's something to keep in mind have a big board, core calls four things, four things get fronts. You kind of see where we're going with this. So that's pretty much it for the deck profile. I can real quickly show you what like the general idea of what the uh, game plan is for the deck since it's mostly about filling the board and applying fronts to make your board really strong. So I'm going to show you real quick what the general idea is supposed to be. All right, so this is pretty much what assuming the first turn when you ride to core is pretty much going to want to kind of look like First thing you're obviously going to want to do is if you have Percival in hand, you're already going to want to call it, do the skill, you kind of blast, you're going to discard something, get your second gift, draw something, and then get your Aggro Veil. So now right there from the fact that you called Percival, Core already gained the crit, you called two things, Core just got 6k, and then you just keep calling from that point on. So if you have something in hand that you really think is not going to be helpful and you just want to kind of kill off for the uh, effect. You can look at top four. Maybe on your top four you found like a Dindrain and an Aglavale, hopefully. You know, you get to call two things anyways, so it's nice. Um, Dindrain, you can choose a counter charge or, you know, draw. It's up to you. Um, I like to do the counter charge just so you can kind of save it for when you're doing more Percivals and cores in the future. Um, but just from calling four things, Core already gained 12k, so now it's at 24. You called an Aglavail, so it has a crit. And if you're already done at that point, you know, field building, Fallon has the 14. You can use Fallon to kind of do some pressure. Look at the top card. If it's a trigger, you know it's a trigger, you're gonna leave it on top. If it's not, you can call it, but that's if Fallon hits. But if they choose to guard it, you know, you're kind of like not provoking, but making your opponent feel pressured to guard attacks early because a lot of times when, when people play against excel decks they like to take damage right away and get a defensive trigger but if you're going to swing at something small like this they might be compelled to guard it instead of just take that trigger just because it does have an effect when it hits so then then when you swing with core with the crit you got a front and now that whole front row gets an extra 10 and then now you're going to have all these aggravales and that personal hitting for big numbers Aglavels are going to swing, they're going to suck that Percival back in, and then for the next turn, when you use Core's skill, you're going to be able to call four things instead of just the two. And then if you, let's say the next turn, write another Core, get another gift, draw another card, you now have another spot to fill for when you're calling those four. 
So the deck kind of propels itself as it's kind of domino affecting and calling more cards every single turn. And then because you're going to continuously keep going through the deck, you're going to have plenty of opportunities to use cards like Dindrain and Josefas. Um, so, and then alternatively, if you really decide that you don't like, you know, Fallon as a pressure card, you can always substitute this out for um, uh, Sagamore, or if you don't like Vivian, you can substitute Vivian for Sagamore as well, just so that you have an easier time using the Dindrains that are in your hand. But since you're going through the deck so often with Prominence Core, I feel like you see these enough as it is. And also, Dindrain having the 10k shield makes it a little bit easier. It did kind of use as defense fodder anyway, so it all works out. But that's pretty much the general idea of how the deck kind of plays. And I'm having a lot of fun with it, so let me, go, let me know what you guys think. Uh, other suggestions you guys might have, just be sure to... Um, leave some positive feedback for the video. I'd appreciate it. Uh, thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.